Hello, I'm Lowell Martin and this is MCC Today, the show for total omnivores. On today's show, we have Kimberly Rush, Dr. Samantha Lay, and Phyllis Holliday. You know you want to watch. Meridian Community College. For more than 75 years, we've helped students soar. Establishing the first tuition guarantee program in Mississippi, we put our students first while creating pathways into the workforce and offering a seamless transition to a four-year degree. Now is the time to find your purpose and register today because those who move forward never get left behind. MCC, find your wings. And we are here with the wonderful Miss Phyllis Holiday today. How are you doing? I'm good. I know. Let me just tell you what it took for me to get you on this show. Okay, okay. We, don't have, we don't have to talk about that. <laughs> I came completely willingly. You did, you did, you did. But it was a lot of co coaxing, coercing, you know, and I'm like, look, I've known you a million years. Get up here. I'm so shy, though. This is true. <laughs> Uh, but you are one of the advisors for Phi Theta Kappa, and you have been for how many years now? Oh, goodness. I think we're on 13. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you, do, you do an absolutely wonderful job, but I wanted you to come on and talk about Phi Theta Kappa and tell, tell the audience what it is and why it's important for students to be a part of if they're offered the opportunity. All right, so Phi Theta Kappa is a two-year honors organization, so for um, community colleges. So I tell students a lot of times it's similar to like the National Honor Society in high school, but it's not based on your high school grades, it's based on um, your college grades. And so once you've completed 12 hours, um, that can be any classes, CTE, um, Gen Ed, um, just not remedial courses, right. but once you've completed 12 hours and you have a 3.5 GPA or above, you're automatically invited to join. Okay. Um, so we run the eligibility list. I'm actually working on that now. We okay. run the eligibility list at the beginning of the fall um, mm, and the nice spring semesters. I mean, the last time it was a pretty long Yes, list, there's close goodness. to 200 this time. That so is there's wonderful. a lot. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so, yeah, so that's awesome. So um, we'll, you're automatically sent a letter. Um, we mail those. Um, if you're an athlete or live on campus or if you're in one of our classes, sometimes we hand deliver those. Um, but for most of them, they're mailed to the address that we have on file. So it is important that you that your address that you have on file with sure. admissions is, is correct because that is the one that we use. Um, and and like I said, you're automatically invited. So then you um, pay $100 to join. That is a one-time lifetime membership fee that pays your local dues for our chapter, um, your international dues, and your regional dues. Um, you know, and so you can use your financial aid or scholarship money or anything mm -hmm. like that um, to go towards that as well. And so all of that information is, is in your packet okay. um, when they receive the packet. Um, also, we usually try to reach out. Um, one of our PTK officers will usually try to text or call the students to follow up with them to make okay. sure. Um, so if you get a random text and it says, hey, I'm a Phi Theta Kappa officer, it's legit. <laughs> um, they're just reaching out to make sure that you got your packet to see if you have any questions about anything. Thing. Um, we also send out a list um, to the distribution list to faculty and staff so that they know their students have been invited to join right. so that they can encourage them. So um, we always encourage faculty to, to, and staff to look at that list, know your students, encourage them. Sometimes they just, they think it's a fraternity or sure, a sorority. Sure. Um, and but so it isn't. It isn't. Okay. And, so, um, and so they just don't know what it is. Okay. Um, and so sometimes just that little encouragement from faculty or staff is, is all the student needs to, to join. Um, so why why should you join? Why should you join? Why should you join? Why should I put um, forth this hundred dollars? <laughs> right. Besides the fact that we're really awesome and have a lot of fun. Yes. <laughs> um, it, it really is an opportunity for scholarship money um, moving forward. You don't earn scholarships necessarily on the MCC's campus, um, but all of your um, four-year institutions 
um, in Mississippi give a Phi Theta Kappa scholarship. My niece was mm -hmm. in Phi Theta Kappa, paid the $100, and got, a, I want to say, and I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm correct on this, got uh, uh, almost $8,000 yes. in scholarship money <clears throat> yes. while it's, she was finishing mm -hmm. her, completing yeah. her degree. It's usually between eight to 10000 and obviously as tuition goes up, then right. that goes up. Um, private schools usually give a little more, but their tuition's a little more, so it's usually um, you know, that has, so every school's a little different, um, but there are schools that give Phi Theta Kappa scholarships nationwide, mm -hmm. um, you know, but not every school um, gives that, but you definitely want to check on that. So there's lots of scholarship opportunities, um, also scholarship opportunities through Phi Theta Kappa headquarters itself. Um, you can, those are competitive scholarships. Just as an aside, and the headquarters is in Jackson, Mississippi. It is, it, it, it is. Was, Phi Theta Kappa was started here in Mississippi, am I correct? <laughs> well, it was that, started or? in it originally in Kansas City, but well, we're the say. <laughs> but the headquarters is here, okay. and they did move it here, okay, okay, um, okay. which is really awesome and sure, unique. Sure. Um, you know, and so we um, get to see a lot of the headquarters staff um, when we're when we're meeting under normal circumstances. <laughs> um, then we get to see them on a regular basis, which is really cool because not everybody um, has the opportunity to do that. Um, so there are competitive scholarships through Phi Theta Kappa headquarters. Quarters, in addition right. to the guaranteed scholarships that you get just for maintaining. So 3.5 to be invited, 3.25 to stay in. Um, and then there are also leadership opportunities, fellowship opportunities, um, and all of that looks great on a resume it to really earn does. those more, really more scholarships, right? Those competitive scholarships. And so, trying to get in particular programs, get in exactly. particular grad schools, mm -hmm. get in For particular, sure. you know, yeah. med school, things like that. Yes. It looks really good that you've been in and that yes. you are in Phi Theta Kappa. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh my so, goodness. Yeah. So you have lots of leadership opportunities. Again, under normal circumstances, we're doing a lot more community service sure. than we are right now. Um, but there's still opportunities out there. And once you, take, you join... You also take really good, great trips, too. So, typically, know, pre, yes. Pre-COVID. Yes, pre-COVID. post-COVID. <laughs> yes. You, yes. You've been to some really uh -huh. cool places. Yes. We go to international convention every year. Um, Orlando's, Orlando's usually on the um, the, ro the rotation in Disney World. Um, Nashville's usually on the rotation. But um, in the upcoming years, there's some places that I haven't even been yet in my 13 years. Um, so Colorado's, let me, let me California. Let <laughs> out there as a chaperone, you, as I have oh, done okay. for the past 13 years, Miss <laughs> Holiday. And I'm like, excuse me. Do you like to go? And she says, and every time she's like, you really, you really? And I'm like, or Orlando? Yes, I do. I want to go to Orlando. Okay, we're going to get you in on the fundraising. And <laughs> okay. <laughs> you can sell some moms and some sheets ooh, and you can ooh, go with ooh. us. Yes, ooh. So, um, but we are still doing community service stuff. So, um, you know, lots of schools, I mean, they still need science fair judges. They still, you know, um, the blood, um, blood donations that we do here on campus, you know, all those different kinds. There's still opportunities um, for you to serve, even though times are different right now. We didn't have sure. our annual breast cancer race. You know, some of those types of things um, we weren't able to have. Which y'all are super involved in that. And oh, so yes. much, more, so mm -hmm. many people on our campus are involved with that, but y'all yes. in particular are involved yes. with that. So we initiated that. That um, this would have been um, the eleventh year um, for that, but obviously we did, we did not we weren't able to have that in October. But um, we we spearhead that um, for many years. It was with the American Cancer Society, but last year um, was the first time we kind of spearheaded that solo and gave all of those um, that money to the local benevolence fund. So mm -hmm. well, let me just say because every time I ask you to be on the show, every time I ask her to be on the show, she's like, "Oh, what am I going to talk about? What am I going to?" To talk about and all I have to do is ask one question yeah. <laughs> just one <laughs> and thank you so much for You're being welcome. on the, on the show you. and I do hope that the information gets out there yes, and anyone sure. who has been offered the opportunity mm -hmm. to be in PTK please please take advantage of this yes and they can reach out to me if they have questions thank mm -hmm. you so much thank you we'll be right back not essential never let anyone tell you that again Never doubt your abilities to make a difference. How do I know this about you? Because I'm a teacher. I am the one who will push you harder and farther than you could have ever imagined. Teach you things that you never thought possible. And if you will give me 100%, then I will stand shoulder to shoulder with you and together we will change your future. MCC, find your wings. 
Uh, we had the ever, I almost said the ever bewildering, <laughs> that just made no sense, <laughs> Dr. Samantha Lee, Lee, Lee. I'm, <laughs> we had, <That's> just, <laughs> yes, <laughs> this, what a great way to start. We had the ever wonderful Dr. Samantha Lay here today. <laughs> now, you are our, uh, you're part of our uh, language literature and success division. Correct. Uh, but today you are here to talk about something in particular, and yes. it is our literary magazine, yes. which is called The Apocalypse. Apocalypse. Okay. Yeah. So what's happening with The Apocalypse? We, um, we have extended the deadline, actually, for submissions to Apocalypse. We were okay. getting some, uh, we just wanted to have students ha and, and the community have more time to submit, especially because we got out so early. Um, and so, yeah, we are extending the deadline. It was January 15th, and now it is February 15th. Okay. So what can they submit? They can submit short stories, informal essays, and poetry. You're not limited to either one. You can submit in all categories. Okay. Do you have like a, a word limit or anything like we that? We do, and I uh, Just, am yeah. looking that up right now. Um, <laughs> we have um, 10 pages for short stories. Um, typed or handwritten? Typed, of course. Oh, oh my goodness. Typed. This is 2021. You're right, you're right. But the yes. first thing that went through my I know that was a stupid question. Well, they're not but, stupid. Uh, well, there are some uh, stupid but, okay, 10 type, okay. 10, right, because we're submitting online okay. in this in this okay. new right century. Yes. We're yes, um, thank you. submitting I keep online. getting lost. <laughs> and um, informal essays are five, no more than five typewritten, and then poetry no more than 50 typewritten lines. Okay, and each category you will have a first place, second place, third place? Correct. Do you do honorable mentions? Or, no. Okay, first, second, Not third. Not yet, anyway. Okay, and then these are all put in? The Apocalypse the Literary apocalypse. Review, right. That we can, you can see um, online, it's a PDF with flip pages. Okay. And so, yeah, it's very new age, so that's why we don't do handwritten. Again, um, yes, when, that when, reason. Will the, uh, when will we actually get the apocalypse? When will it be hopefully completed by? Um, it so would that be people will because um, Daniel Etheridge and his graphic design students they put it together and and illustrate it, and they do an incredible job with it. They I mean, really, really they really, it's, it's, they it's, really it's, I, I was so impressed with with last year's edition. Um, but that would be probably the beginning of the summer to give them the the full spring semester to complete okay. their work on it. But we'll know our, I'm anticipating your okay. next question. We're going to know the winners um, by the beginning of March. And what will they win? They will win money. Oh my goodness. I know. Okay. Uh, so we have $75 for first place, $50 for second place, and $25 for third. Okay. And you can win more than one. Okay, so it's, you're not limited to just one Right, thing. if you're a talented writer, you can really bank on this. Okay, award. and now the category, do you have like the high school division and community division, or how is it separated? So we have the community division, and then um, community and MCC are okay. together right now, but we're hoping to be able to split those next year, and then high school is its own division. Okay, now uh, uh, how did you get involved with the apocalypse? Just curious. Because um, I know you already have a lot on your plate. <laughs> no, <laughs> never. <laughs> um, I do more, and I have, the more I have on my plate, the more, uh, I don't know, productive I am, I guess yes, you could yes. say, because downtime is not <laughs> good for me. Okay. Uh, but no, but uh, Mr. Maeda asked me um, last year, he, he asked me to, to work with him on it. He was restarting it. It's been, sure, been it, it dead for a few for a years, while, right? Yeah. And so we have a resurrection, right. the apocalypse. Thank you. And um, yeah, he asked me to be part of it. And I was very grateful and I'm pleased to work with him because he's a great, great colleague. He is. A, but now, have you, have you been surprised by the talent in the area? I really have. Or lack the, of talent? No, <laughs> no, of course the talent. The talent. Of course okay. the talent. Um, yes, because they're... The submissions that we got, people really put their, their heart and soul into the writing and um, share personal things and, and very creative and artistic. And yes, I was impressed, definitely. I'm going to tell you, you know, 40 million years ago when I came here, I actually submitted. And if I'm not mistaken, I won first place for poetry. And see, and that should. You know, and look at me now. Look at, see, <laughs> the creative, we knew back then <laughs> yes. what a prize you were. But uh, uh, now, do you hope to, are there any, ch you said you're going to change it, you're hoping to change it and separate community college from the community. Correct. Or community college students from the co community. Do you have any other changes that you would like to see come in the years, in the future? 
we're going to start there first. Okay. Let's we're, we'll Slow, get there, and then, and then hopefully we can actually increase the the funding as we get more um, entries um, that we can hopefully increase the prize money as well, which that is all be, provided by the MCC Foundation, who very generously wonderful. provide that that money for us. Okay. Now, uh, just take aside from you know, I mean going away from the Literary Review magazine just a little bit. I want to I want to. Uh, uh, Throw a question at you, okay. you know, and because I've been asked this a lot uh, with students who are taking literature classes, why is it important for a student to take a literature class oh. or multiple literature classes, yeah, all even of if them. it's not part of their program? Why is it important to do that? Because I know you've taught many kinds. I've taught, I've taught uh, world lit, uh, American lit, British lit. Uh, Love, love teaching all of them. Right, right. All of them. I, without a doubt, love teaching all of them. Why is it important for students to take these classes? Literature is life. It's like all of the arts. It, um, it reflects what's going on in the world. It helps progress social issues and expose social issues. We literally wouldn't be where we are today in society as progressive as we are and as we're continuing to be if it wasn't for literature. To um, to show us who we are, to question who we are, to question whether our values are what um, we think they should be or the, whether, whether like social laws reflect who we are. And mm -hmm. um, it, yeah, it can change the world. All of the arts can. And can sometimes make you think in ways that you never thought of before. Absolutely. Or you consider can under, things you never yeah, thought of before. You can understand yourself and your world better through the arts and that includes literature. And why is it important, coming back to the apocalypse and literate, why is it important to encourage people to write? Um, it helps them understand themselves. As, as they write, they might realize that um, they're revealing something about themselves or a fear that they had or a worry that they had um, that they weren't even aware was sort of underneath the surface, but then when they write, there it comes. And so mm -hmm. it can just not only be therapeutic, but then when other people read it, they can make that connection and go, I'm not alone. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm experiencing what this person has experienced. I find that, you know, because if you're in any of these, you know, if you're having issues with alcohol, drugs, mental issues, you have uh, uh, many other types of issues, one of the things that they always recommend is to write it down, to journal, yep. to write it down, yep. how important writing is. Yes. And sometimes writing it and sharing it with others right. shows that you're not alone in this, that you're Correct. not. And so reading important. about but what other people have written to, to make that connection again, realize that um, you're not only other people have gone through this um, going back hundreds of years. Sure. And, uh, well, yeah. okay, so the deadline is now February 15th. February 15th. Which is uh, this coming This coming week. Monday. Mm -hmm. uh, now, how do they submit? What, where would they submit to if they have? Anything would they send it to you? Um, well, they they will submit online okay. if you go to the MCC webpage. Okay. The Apocalypse Literary Review comes up on that webpage. And you click on that, and there. exactly. Excellent. Listen, I want to get you back with uh, so that we can talk about who won and all of that. And I think just think it, this is a great. I'm so glad it's coming back, and it's hopefully coming I back in too. full force. I am too. We'll talk later. Okay. Okay. We'll be right back. Since 1996, the MCC Foundation Tuition Guarantee Program has provided students an opportunity to find their potential. Thousands of students have benefited from the program. Over $6 million have been invested in the students who learn and live right here in our community. This program is funded by individuals and businesses who believe in our students, our families, and the economic impact of an education at Meridian Community College. Now is your chance to offer support. Give today at meridiancc.edu slash give. We have the wonderful Miss Kimberly Rush here with us Thank today. Thank you. Now you are the Director of Advising and Retention. Yes, sir. And now how long have you been at MCC now? Um, December 1, around that time, was my start date. Okay. How, how are we doing so far? How, We're doing how, good. Really good. Okay. Learning a lot, getting to know everyone, so it's been good so far. Have people been good to you? Yes, they actually okay. have been very good to me. Okay. Glad I'm, I'm, to be a part of MCC. Good, good. Like if there would be any other answer. But, yes. <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, yeah. it, but it, this is really a great place to work. It is, definitely It is really so. a very open uh, uh, place and a very, you know, comforting place, mm -hmm. a comfortable place. Definitely. But as far as ed your advising and retention, okay, um, and you're in charge of this and you're in charge of a group of, of, of advisors, what do you think is the most important thing, uh, the most important qualities that an advisor should have? 
Well, one, I definitely think that advisors need to learn to how to make a relationship with their advisee. Okay. Um, it's all about relationships these days, and we definitely want our advisors to be at a point to where they can, you know, add conversation to the advisor. It's not mm -hmm. just about getting you a schedule, making sure you're on track to graduate, you know, whenever that time comes, but making sure that we get to know you behind the scenes as well. How is your family? Of course, COVID-19 is going on, and so sure. what's going on, you know, outside of classroom that could prevent you and be a barrier to you completing your coursework. So we definitely want to add that piece on to ensure our students know the resources that they mm -hmm. have at MCC, and then also how to reach out to their advisors in case something happens. Mm -hmm. Well, now, because, you know, I have said repeatedly, because, you know, advisors, this is typically the first yes. point of, you know, that a person meets, you know, whether they're seeing them, whether they're calling mm -hmm. them, whether they're emailing them. Yes. This is that first contact. Yes. And it is very important that that first contact be positive. Correct, correct. Positive, encouraging, and that person leaves not only with what they need as far as getting a schedule, but also I know who to contact if something happens. Okay. And, you know, I like to say that that is your person at MCC. And so your person, your advisor, will be the person to direct you in the correct direction direction, be it tutoring, be it financial aid, be it advising, be it housing, whatever the case may be, making sure that that person can, um, knows who to contact, who to reach out to in case something does happen. Well, now, so we get to the uh, the retention part mm -hmm. of it, and you just mentioned a lot of things, but what, why is that part so important? And I, I mean, I know intellectually, mm -hmm. you know, I know that, it, you know, not only do we need to get the students, but mm -hmm. we need to keep them because they need to finish. But mm -hmm. why do you want to bring that in to what you're doing as well? Well, we want to retain our students for one thing, is just the, the worth of getting an associate's degree, getting their sure. career technical certificate, whatever they came to MCC for. You know, our ultimate goal is for them to, whenever they complete that, to be able to feel good about themselves, to be able to contribute to their family, contribute to society. And just imagine how good that feels to oh, say, yeah. I started out, you know, whenever that came, that time was, and then I was able to persist. I was able to continue on in my academic goals, my uh, career goals, whatever classes I'm here at EMCC4, I was able to, through COVID-19, through being laid off, through being sick, whatever, whatever it is, that I was able to push through and be able to graduate. And upon graduating, I am just that more marketable in, this, in society to get a, a good career, a good job. Now you've mentioned some of the things, but I think this bears repeating. What are some of the um, um, tools that we have to help students, to help to retain our students? Well, one, our advisors are wonderful at helping they retain are. students because they know the tricks of the trade to help students stay, be successful in classes. So one, you're, they're getting in contact with your advisor and staying in contact with your advisor. We have tutoring available. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, it's so many ways. That's even where, that's where hello, we come in. Yes, yes. <laughs> even students who can't come to campus, who are online, mm -hmm. there's tutoring available. Mm -hmm. A lot of students don't know that. You know, how to email your advisor through Canvas. Your advisor could help you with that. Mm -hmm. um, we have um, resources through our um, student, uh, student services coordinator to help students who may have a need of getting books or having a, a food need yes. or uh, things Rush like was that. Ms. last week to talk exactly, about that. Exactly, yes. exactly. So the, the most important thing, because we have so much available, um, the most important thing is stay in contact with your advisor because they would know resources that are available and say, hey, this is the issue that I have going on. I can't get to class right now. Or, you know, know um, I can't get the uniform or hey my books cost this much and I've exhausted my financial aid this semester who could I reach out to and mm -hmm. so keeping in contact with your advisor your advisor like oh, okay here's the contact information for that person I've added them to this email that right, right there could help someone right and, and, and a lot of times because we have teachers and so many of our teachers so many of our the advisors mm -hmm. the teachers are very concerned mm -hmm. about their students mm -hmm. and their students' mm -hmm. success and completing. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is, is as you said, communication. Correct. We've got to know that there's yes. a problem going yes. on before we can help address yes. that problem. And, and early gonna, on, you know, a lot on. of times, you know, you know, right now it's it's early February, mm -hmm. but you'd be surprised we don't hear from students until the middle of March. Sure. It's spring break and now, you know, I've missed so many things and it's so hard yes. to recoup and, and, and make up for, you know, what you've missed. So when you first identify an issue, having, being able to come to class, internet access, whatever the case may be, yes. let someone know on the front end rather than the back end. I tell students this all the time in the success center, when mm -hmm. they come in and I say, don't, don't wait until you failed two papers. Yes, exactly. To get help. Don't exactly. wait until you failed that third math test. Exactly. Come in, if you know this is not your strong mm -hmm. suit, if you walk into a class and you feel like, okay, wait a minute. Yes. <laughs> 
Yes. You need to go and get help immediately. Correct. And help is available. Yes. And then uh, come not just come once, but come often. Mm -hmm. You know, I t when I was at UWA, I was I took tutoring at Student Success Center. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm my first test did not come out as I, I had planned it to be for one of my psychology classes, and I went to tutoring, and I began to live there for that one class. Sure. And I came on the class with an A. But mm -hmm. being able to reach out and use that as a resource is, is, is very vital. And we have students who come and live with us yes. for the, the Comp 1 and Comp 2 Wonderful. or for the College Algebra. Mm -hmm. But the biggest thing is to, to realize and not be afraid to ask for help. Definitely. Or not be embarrassed to ask for help. Definitely. Because so often I find students, when they are, uh, their, their gut reaction is to run for the hills. Mm -hmm. And we keep going, no, don't do that. Yes, yes. Don't do that. Do you see any changes that you can envision that you can talk about that uh, maybe uh, for the future of advising and retention here? We're definitely working on more of a relational approach to, uh, to advising. And so, again, it's not just about you getting in classes and you persisting in those, in those courses, but it's also about you being able to talk with your advisor about things outside of what's going on at MCC. Okay. And so be it family issues, be it um, just life issues you know, yeah. so, this is 2021 this, this, so many life issues are going sure. on and and so many times students think that I'm just coming I come to MCC just to get an education and go home but what happens at home will directly impact what's going on at MCC it. and so we're definitely working on that we're working on getting software as well to be able to reach our students on the platform of course phones which right. they're definitely uh, definitely more accustomed to okay. so we're definitely working on that and so students can be able to get in contact with who they need at the touch of their iPhone I'm very excited about all of this. I am as well. Well, listen, I want to have you back mm -hmm. because this was not enough time. No. And so we're going to have to do we're this We're done again. already? We are done already. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, we will be right back. With so much uncertainty in our world, we are thankful for the heart and determination of those who have followed their calling in healthcare. They work tirelessly on the front lines every day to make a true difference in our community. At Meridian Community College, we take pride in training these heroes and are grateful for their service in this time of great need. These eagles found their wings at Meridian Community College. Our students have been out and about taking all kinds of videos, learning all kinds of stuff about this place. Oh, you know you want to watch this. Hi, I'm Drew Belvin, and today we're at the Tide Learning Resources Center to talk with Chris Harrelson on how MCC Sports is recovering from COVID-19. So we've just started athletics in the spring semester here at Meridian Community College. Um, basketball started about two weeks ago. Um, baseball kicked off with opening day yesterday, and softball leaves today, headed down to Pensacola to open their season in a tournament at Pensacola State College. Um, tennis has already played a few matches, and the golf team will open up their season next Monday. Um, the only other sports that we have that haven't played so far is soccer, and they'll start after spring break sometime around the 1st of April. So soccer normally plays in the fall. They normally play in August, and this year, due to COVID, they've been pushed back all the way to the last sport, and like I said, they'll start in April. In response to COVID, what we've done here on campus is each morning the kids or the athletes have to go by the weight room between 7 a.m. and 9 a.m., and they do a COVID questionnaire where they tell us if they've had any symptoms of COVID and they do a temperature check so we can monitor their temperatures every day. Twice a week, I have to take those temperatures and that questionnaire and email the commissioner of the Mississippi Athletics Conference of Community Colleges and he looks over it to determine whether or not we are basically fit or well to play um, in competition. So far, we've been very fortunate as far as COVID goes. We've only had a few cases. We've had zero outbreaks. We've been able to contain the one or two cases we've had with the one person, send them home, have them quarantine. They haven't infected anybody else on the team to this point. So we've been real fortunate there. Um, we lost one basketball game with the women's basketball team because the other team had a few COVID positives. But again, we haven't been affected and we've been very fortunate to this point to not have any outbreaks on campus. We certainly thank Mr. Harrelson for all the information and this is Drew Belvin signing out. On behalf of executive producer Matt Milner, media consultant Josh Taylor, and our student producers Tanya Jenkins and Luke Yelverton, thank you for watching. Hope you learned just a little.